So come with me now while we walk along the herbalist's path. She would have walked this many times in the daytime. I don't know why I think it's a she, but I always think of herbalists as she's. Just, just um, if you're coming down to Glen Russian, just park up by the cattle grid. Powerful person, the herbalist was because there was no um, national health those days. This is where she would have collected her water from, make up her potions. Not far along here is the well, her home. Not a lot of it left now. I had a friend over from Australia a few years ago and I took him here and showed it to him. It does fascinate me, always has done. Window on the world. The apothecary's uh, outlook wouldn't be very good from this window. Just a few walls left. Two rooms and um, probably one side would be where she kept the potions I guess or made them or he so, so my, I always think it would be a she but it always does seem to me to be a she and um, when I was here my friend reckoned this place had been on fire now two things could have happened there it obviously probably would have been oh, obviously it more likely would have been a thatched roof and fire were quite common with those attributes in, uh, in those days. Well, perhaps she was um, deemed to be a witch because they're only a few yards from the top of Witch's Hill or Stewalian. Perhaps she was taken away and burnt, who knows? Or rolled down the hill, as the folklore says. Interestingly, they've uh, dug out the back of the uh, Thalton to stop the water or the rain or the whatever it is getting into the inside. So, a bit of thought has gone into this one rather than just digging into the side of the hill like most of them were. This one's actually had uh, the back taken away. But the main reason we're up here is just come with me around this corner. And through a little garden gate. The lazy beds of Glen Russian. And um, the person who lived up here would have had some power. Because although today it looks empty and forlorn, in its heyday there'd be thousands or probably hundreds of people living and working up here. And she would be the um, the lifesaver for animals and people. And got back with mine up the top of the hill there, employed hundreds of men. And there at the end there's track down over the road going to Glen May, there's the Glen Russian slate quarry that employed a stack of men as well. So she would have been a busy lady. And in I think volume three of my Thalton books I've got a page about some of the stuff that she would have picked. So I'll take a video off it. I'm not suggesting you use it yourselves, but um, in the old days it was one of the things that saved lots of people. Whether it was the uh, placebo effect or the reality, I don't know. The um, 
Herbal Lady's Place. I haven't got a name for it. It's in Mike Goldie's book, but he didn't have it named. And I say it's a woman, as I've said before. Maybe it is, maybe it is. I don't know. I think of it as a female thing, anyway. I'm pretty sure that that would be correct, because Mike Goldie's, one of his best friends, was a guy called Gordon Cotter. And his family farmed in Balakotti, I believe, many years ago. So they probably would have that information more so than what's on today. Anyway, cut out the rubbish. Um, just to give you some idea of some of the plants we've really got. Um, one was called Broom, it's a purgative, and it was to reduce swellings. Bog Bean was smoked for toothache. Burdock was for purifying the blood, skin diseases, and nervousness. This was a very fair remedy. Buckshorn plantain was good for staunchy wounds, I imagine that's blood flow. Centauri, I don't know what that one's is, whether that's still about or not these days, was for liver infections and uh, a good cure for piles apparently. Dose for the crane spill, for the mouth of tongue sores, I suppose ulcers, and anointing the eyes. Duck was for sheep scab. The bee wasp and nettle stings. The leaf was rubbed on the affected part, and I can guarantee that that does work. Eye bright was used as an eye salve, and elder was used or tramon was used for bites. Fennel was for flatulence and the diuretic. Flux weed was obviously for curing flux. And from evidence of witchcraft trial in 1712, we find that there was a several herbs used in the island as preservation against flux and fever. Apparently flux was a terrible scourge in the 17th and 18th century. Foxglove, its leaves were applied as a poultice for bringing balls etc to a head. Granavi was again for purifying the blood and for coughs. Goutwort, or cattle herb, was for sores in the mouth of cattle and for toothache. A guy called Kluke was a well-known cow doctor and bone set of the Strang village near Douglas considered this plant to be an unfailing remedy for these sores. Groundsel, a ground herb, was an imperial for cattle and birds, also for, for ague. Don't know what that one is, honeysuckle. It was, it was supposed to be thought mistakenly for the bees could reach its honey, it was considered uh, good to keep milk from stringiness and butter from blackness. Lice bane, good for lice or the itch. Milkwort, it's used to promote the flow of milk in the breasts. I wonder if that's still in use today. Mouse ear, it's also a diuretic. Navel wart was used for womb ulcer. Yeah. Nettles were used if for relaxing the bowels. In the wall, for a slow and circulation, the beating favor. the skin. Penny wart, it wouldn't grow. Was a poultice for scald or for it a pimple. Own spec, doesn't it? Can also be used for heart disease. Raven's purse is good for a scalded sore. Ribwood plant. Now here's the sales pitch. This is uh, volume three of the three volumes I've done. And there's not many left, but the lazy beds are in volume three. And um, on one of the pages I've listed the. Um, herbs and what they would have been used for so I'll see if I can find somewhere where the sun's not too strong and take a video of it. It may be handy for a reference but for goodness sake don't try it yourself. So there you are there's eight herbs but I guess there would have been a lot more than that and those are some of the commoner ones and what they were used for. I'm not sure whether you can actually see it on the video or not or how clear the writing is. Read it out to you the first one's bog bean Common bugle, plantain, elderberry, burdock, cranesbill, dandelion, and broom. They got manx names, but excuse my ignorance, I would never dream of trying to pronounce them. <laughs>